My name is Darren Croft. Um, I'm from the University of Exeter and the Centre for Research and Animal Behaviour. But today I'm not in Exeter. We can see the sea behind me uh, and Vancouver Island in the distance there. We're studying these whales, the southern resident killer whale population. And these whales return to this area every summer to feed on the migrating salmon. These salmon are moving into this area to swim up into the rivers and spawn. These whales have been coming back here their entire lives. And this project, the Centre for Whale Research where we're staying, has been going on since the early 70s. And originally these researchers were tasked with counting the whales. How many resident killer whales were they? And it soon became apparent there were very few. From markings on these whales, the, the saddle patch and the shape of the dorsal fin, it was possible to identify individuals and the researchers soon realized it was the same individuals coming back every year. When they were able to track these individuals through time, something incredible emerged from this data, which is that the females in the population were having their last calf around age 40, but that they could live until they're 90 or 100 years old. From an evolutionary perspective, this is really puzzling. Why have your last calf part way through your life? Why have your last offspring part way through your life? Surely, like the majority of other species, the optimal strategy would be to reproduce until the end of life. This is clearly not we do, what we do as humans. Women have menopause midway through their life, after which they no longer reproduce. In humans, there's a great debate as to whether or not this is simply an artifact of us living longer in modern society. We have medical care, we have agriculture, we have modern living conditions, and lifespans have increased. So is menopause an artifact of this environment, or is it an evolved adaptation which has deep roots in our evolutionary past? These killer whales, they don't have modern medical care. In contrast, we're actually fishing the salmon from the seas. We're preventing the salmon running up the rivers by putting dams. And we're polluting the sea. These whales, if anything, are even ch more challenged now than they were a thousand years ago. Yet still, they have their last calf in the middle of their life, around 30 to 40 years old, but have this incredible period of up to 60 years when they're alive but not reproducing. Our project here is trying to understand why this is and how these old females can contribute to their social group without reproducing directly. What we found is that the old females provide significant survival benefits to their social group. So what I should say is that what we know about these killer whales is that neither sons nor daughters disperse from their family group. So sons will live with their mothers their entire life, as will daughters. And what we found is that when these old females die, so these post-reproductive females die, there's an increased risk of their sons dying by around eight times in the year following her death. So these old females are doing something that really helps keep their sons alive. The effect for the daughters isn't quite as large. It really is that the sons are becoming, appear to be becoming dependent on their mothers. And these are, these are old sons. These are not young males that are perhaps struggling to become uh, sexually mature. These are whales that are 30 years old and males rarely live past 30 or 40. So these old females are keeping their adult sons alive. We've been interested in why. Why is this and how can they be doing this? What we've looked at is these whales coming in to forage here in the summer months on the salmon. And this salmon varies in space and time as to how abundant it is. And what we found is that it's the old females that are leading the group in around these foraging grounds. But what's incredible is that they lead more when salmon is in low supply. So we know that salmon fluctuates from year to year. Some years there's abundance of salmon and some years it's very difficult for them to find. These whales live on a knife edge. If they don't find salmon, they will die. So this could potentially explain 
how are these old females are contributing to keeping the family group alive and why it's so important that they're still alive even long after they've stopped reproducing. Well what can this tell us about humans? If you think of our ancient ancestors, information would have been stored in individuals. If there was a drought and the drought hadn't happened for 50 years and we needed to know where to find water, we'd have to turn to the elders. They would have the knowledge of where and when to go to be able to find food and water. Or even to solve conflict amongst groups or within families. The older individuals will have more experience. So our research here on the resident killer whales is telling us both how natural selection, how evolution may have led to this very unusual life history strategy where individuals stop reproducing part of the way through their life. It shows that this can be adaptive, that it can evolve via natural selection and gives us some insight into our own life history evolution and possibly insight into how menopause has evolved in humans and the role that information may have played in this evolution. So this is just part of the research that's going on at the University of Exeter and the Centre for Research in Animal Behaviour. We're very fortunate to work with these long-term study populations where we can take long-term individual-based data like this and we can ask behavioural and evolutionary questions.